Um, all right, let's talk about uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Seven: Steel Ball Run. And we'll probably bring up JoJo's Bizarre Adventure like every other second week. <laughs> Brett, in general. Uh, we are watching the anime live, but um, me, Bradley, and Joe uh, have read up to part seven, and me and Joe have are up to date with Joe Joe Leon. Uh, four more days, by the way, uh, until the next mm. chapter. However, this poses a problem because Tyler is watching the anime live. Now, Tyler doesn't... Anime really... only. It's tis I, yeah. I just happen to already know everything about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, though, so it's he, okay. He immediately went on a wiki dive, and he he's always been not super caring about the spoilers, and he doesn't like JoJo's as much as us, uh, but he do, he like follows along, and we, we try to watch uh, episodes with uh, each other every week. Um, so, to that end... Let's sidestep some spoilers, and let's... We're going to talk about spoilers, but we're going to kind of uh, swerve around them with our horses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, here's the thing. We could actually... Eat, like it wouldn't even be hard. We could easily talk about Steel Ball Run for you just three hours. Just, oh, yeah. just Steel Ball Run. Not, just, not JoJo's. Yeah. Just the... Oh. What's it? 108 chapters of Steel Ball Run? Or something like that. It's something like, like that. it's ninety five, I think. But, yeah. Like okay, one more bonus thing. Steel Ball Run is like a life changing event for Joe. Um, it is his favorite part. Brad, we're talking about this now because Bradley just finished it like uh, three or four weeks ago. Very recently. Um, we wanted to start the podcast partially to talk about this and have it recorded somewhere. Um, it's my second favorite part. So and... among all of us. We really like this part of yeah. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Much um, like Joe, it is my favorite section of JoJo's, and by no small margin either. Though I do like the other ones. That's just how good Steel Ball Run is. But all right, let's talk, Bradley. Why don't you lead us here? What What are some of your favorite characters and arcs and themes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Part yeah. 7? So, like I said, you know, there's a million things that we could pick apart Steel Ball Run for. And and have it all be positive things. Um, one particular thing I really felt the need to talk about was the motivation for Johnny's journey in Steel Ball Run, how that relates to how death is treated in Steel Ball Run, and how that in turn relates to kind of the take we can have on Johnny's morality. So to talk about Johnny's motivation for his adventure... All of the other JoJo's Bizarre Adventure protagonists are either... Their motivation is directly involved with either stopping a murderer or saving somebody like a family member. Um, which, Sometimes that involves stopping a murderer. Yeah, like both. Like Stardust Crusaders is both. Yeah. Um, all, all, the, all of their motivations, parts one through six there's kind of an immediately good consequence for the world around them if they are able to accomplish their objective. Either they will have saved somebody, um, they will stop a mass murderer. A little, Johnny, a little debatable with Six, but we'll get that in the, a little bit, in the yeah. big episode for Six. That's, oof, that'll be a big Johnny, one. I believe, has the most self-centric goal so far. His His primary thing is in his words, he wants to get his life back to zero, meaning he wants to get out of the negatives, which he views himself in. Yes. He wants to walk again. He will do anything to walk again. He's paraplegic, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, yeah. and how, how did he become a paraplegic? Ooh, well, by his own shitty actions that he... Do you want a very direct spoiler, or do you want me to walk around it? No, no, this is for the audience, man. You can't, you can't, ha you can't just not tell them anything. So, the big theme in in part seven is essentially you take an action, and the consequences of your action can either end up on your side of the court or on the other side of the yes, court. It's a big the theme that, that kind of follows throughout the entire, um, the entire part, and really talks about like you know when given the chance to give someone the ball to really kind of give them the choice of what your fate's going to be, you shouldn't do it. Like, it, you, it's you you should keep your fate in your own hands. You should maintain your own fate. You shouldn't just leave it up to chance. And it happens multiple times, and the characters, and it becomes their downfall. It can be both their downfall, but it also be the thing that, like, 
makes him win in the end. And so Johnny makes a very kind of selfish decision that ends up um, biting him in the ass it, and causes him to become paraplegic. And he and he suffers because of it. And he realizes that like he's just that he has cho- he took a, he made a decision and he can't believe this has happened to him. Kind and of. that that's even a little more mature than it is. Like Johnny yeah. was a fucking little shit, and yeah. and he pays for it by becoming a paraplegic because another person didn't like his attitude, basically. And hmm. um, getting on that, like those panels where he's in the fucking hospital after he's been paralyzed are fucking nightmare fuel. They are it is. very disturbing, um, and it really shows why. Why he wants to walk – his life just hit rock bottom and then went further down, which is why he describes himself in the negatives. His life is completely different from what it was from when he could walk, and that really fits into the theme and his motivations of wanting yeah. to walk again. He, he, he really just wants to walk again, and this is why I find it really – That's what, this is why I find his approach to enemies who show up very interesting. Um steel ball run it dresses very clearly the fact that they are killing these enemies they come across and that this might not be okay um and a lot of the other parts there's lots of nuance to the uh villain of the weeks as someone might call them um and for most of these fights it's pretty apparent that, okay, these people are here, here to kill us. If I don't kill them, they're going to kill me. That's the only way this is going to end. Especially in part uh, five. Yeah. And even if it, that's not the case, the enemy they're fighting is pretty objectively um, Bad. evil, which, you know, there's more nuance to that. Um, but that's the case for a lot of the Villain of the Weeks. And Steel Ball Run, we run into disagreements with um, some of our protagonists on whether certain person should die or not which i like seeing that um i like seeing that object um because gyro is kind of in a state where he he is okay with killing someone but only if that if it's necessary for them to progress in their objective and, well, our, and he really has yeah. to build up to that moment like that is a very pivotal arc where he realizes oh, yeah. that about himself up until mm. that point he's not really willing to do it and from that point on he's like Okay, I, I, this is the true man's world, as he calls it, and I will kill yeah. if I must. But there's a distinction there. He will kill if he must, which is where Bradley's getting to. Yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, like, we almost have like when this when this moment happens, it, it's almost like a flip in our characters, because Johnny mm. at the time, John Johnny's very scared. He's 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 paraplegic. He doesn't have a lot of power. John Jar was the one that has the steel balls and has the spin. It kind of has the ability to protect him. And so up until this point, when we get to this point, Johnny has finally developed his own stand. Um, Stands are essentially like the power system in JoJo's. And so so this is, you know, Johnny getting a stand is his first step to getting back to zero. It's giving him power. Whereas, Whereas Jaira, along the first half of this journey, has his power and protection. And so Gyro comes to the conclusion of that, like, I have the ability to do this, but it doesn't mean I should. Whereas Johnny then ends up growing to, like, because I can, I should, because it's the best way, to, it's the only way to get my goal. And it's it, it, be, it drives our two main characters almost against each other I, ideologically when we see them interact and how they approach situations. Yeah, Johnny is much more... He, he's much more ready to kill than Gyro is. And the reason I find this particularly interesting in Steel Ball Run, because we've, I, I, think, I think we've seen JoJo's protagonists before who are very ready to kill if they have to or even want to. The reason I find it supremely interesting for Johnny is because of his motivation, where if we were to look at some kind of alignment scale, if you look, if I peg Johnny as a chaotic neutral, and the reason I do this is because with his alignment of my objective is to walk again. Let's look. Let's imagine a good alignment, Johnny. He runs into his first enemy, who isn't even necessarily maybe out to kill him. Maybe they just want the corpse part. Give me the corpse part. You can go. Let's imagine this. Yeah. 
a good alignment, Johnny would say, man, there's nothing in the entire world I want more than to walk again. That's all I want, but it's oh. not worth being a murderer over. He'd say, I figure he, out some other path to it. Yeah, this Johnny <laughs> does, does Johnny. not even consider this. Yeah. The primary objective is always the same. However... It, However, <laughs> oh, uh, that would be true, except for what I consider the best arc in Part Seven, oh God. Sugar Mountain. Oh my God, where, I love Sugar Mountain. Whew, at the end of it, Johnny has to make a decision between Gyro and furthering his goal to walk. Yes. And in this really beautiful scene in the snow, first of all, the whole arc is it's got a really fun stand where they have to trade items or else they become part of a tree. Um, and while that happening, there's 11 men who can fuse into each other, shooting at them. It's fucking, bu action-wise, it's already fucking bonkers. But it's then, crazy. <laughs> but then this ending, where one of the 11 men survives, and I forgot the context, but like, uh, Johnny can trade the body part, and that will finish the Sugar Mountain Stand's uh, condition on them, is that how it works? Yes. Right. Yeah, so so they the, the way they get the body parts is they essentially had to trade... One way or another, they they end up like with a plethora of like goods, and they figure out that they can. It's a corpse part, so they trade in some like old animal ears or something to get these, um, the ears for the for the corpse, and so you have. And so they're giving everything away, but they never consider these corpse parts as like something with value to it because they're not money, but they are wanted, and so they have to trade the item for something of a like a, a fair trade in someone else's eye you can't just gam you can't just like throw them away you can't just like chair like give them away like for charity you have to have a transaction between two people and in the end there um johnny trades it for a bottle of whiskey right wine wine but yeah and that leads to one of the most touching moments in part seven for me where gyro walks up and johnny's just defeated in the snow and it's like the first the first time so far that he's had to really trade something like trade his goal for for someone else because yeah. he really at this point he really loves and cares about Gyro right, um, and then Gyro is just like hey man let's let's share that alcohol it'll keep us warm and like they just have this tender moment in the snow, and it's just like yeah. oh my heart it's, they're so well written uh, as a duo. It's the first time you're right. It's the first time we saw Johnny make a compromise on achieving his goal for anything and it really speaks to um how their friendship has grown because we have now established the we have established a new hierarchy of johnny's objectives he is willing he he puts walking again over killing he will kill to walk again but he will not abandon his friend gyro and and he also like it's a little bit less dire of a situation, but in Wired, um, he does the most to protect Gyro. Uh, it's a little less pure than in the Sugar Mountain one because there's a corpse part involved again, and he can get it if he fights uh, Pork Pie Hat Kid or whatever. And he's also in the progress of learning the spin, so like he needs Gyro. But it, it harkens back to that where like yeah, he's gonna fight for Gyro because he, he from the beginning he does kind of like him. Let's uh to to move the discussion a bit. Um so so Bradley really likes Dyro's motivation, we all do. Uh to involve Tyler in a little bit, uh and Hunter Hunter fans, it's very akin to a Kalua gone situation. And if you've read the if you've read the Chimera Ant arc, you kind of know what I'm referring to. But uh let's let's talk about Funny Valentine a little bit. Yeah, let's talk about Funny Valentine. My babe. Um, so if I may, no, I may particularly like um, part six and seven's protagonists, Pucci and Valentine. Antagonist, you mean? Antagonist, yeah. No, protagonist. <laughs> well, you know, in some they, circles. Some people would not argue with that. Um, I'm, I'm with those people. Actually, yeah. yeah. All that Ooh, Tyler. Shit. No, in his wiki dive, Tyler went up to me. He's like, "Are you are you sure that Valentine isn't the good guy?" I was like, "I'm pretty sure, but I could see why you'd be confused." Yeah, the reason I really like these two antagonists is because um, I I think the the core conflict of uh, these parts that 
is related to these antagonists are kind of philosophical issues that people have argued about for actually thousands of years. Um, and to be more specific, if we're talking about Valentine's, it's that, you know, Valentine, he, he does want to ascend into a place of power, of absolute control. Um, and that's kind of a message that a lot of people would immediately be like, I don't like the sound of that. But the reason he wants to do this is because of a pretty firm confidence and belief that by gathering these corpse parts and ascending to this and taking on this leadership role over humanity, where he's this new superior, the napkin can ensure peace. And he might be able to, actually. That's the thing. It's kind of a question of, is peace worth it if the cost for that peace is, I guess, a absolute dis dictatorship? Um, and I don't know if dictator gives the right connotation to what's going on here, but it's it is close. an absolute rule. Yeah, essentially, in Valentine's plan, everyone but America would suffer and america would have the ultimate power in this case they would become the ultimate leadership um and he he likens it to grabbing the napkin at a dinner table if you grab the left one everyone in the dinner table is forced to also grab the left one or else they're going to grab someone else's so you set a precedent through initiative and power um and an initiative kind of ties into the my analogy of the tennis ball thing too so that's kind of interesting but that, that's basically Valentine's um, goal in this. And on top of that, he's just such an – he's an entertaining villain with a great design, a really cool stand. Um, there's really good fights involving him. Yes. He's all right. <laughs> that's, that's not true. He's more than all right. Joe, I'm sure you got some Valentine's things to say. more than good. The, the thing about Valentine is he's also kind of like – when when – you mentioned before that to Johnny, it's it's gyro than the corpus parts, where where nothing will like like he will do whatever he can to to get these corpus parts to walk again, but he won't let gyro go. He will not like leave gyro to die. He will not like he will sacrifice what he has to make sure gyro lives. Like there's a significant love, whereas Valentine is a very much a cold calculating perspective on that where it's just like this is the right thing to do and on paper it is he's the president of the united states of america his job is to protect the united states of america right. that's literally his job and and so it, it's one of those machiavellians do the mean do, do the means justify the ends kind of thing um or do the ends justify the means right. um yeah. and so we we, in, we end up the, like my favorite scene in all of jojo's happens Ooh. and have this direct conflict where where they're staring each other down and valentine promises johnny something and johnny thinks about it and says i can't give that up or i can't take that offer because i know it's wrong because i know that it's not right for in my sense of morals on paper it's it on paper yeah okay but that doesn't mean you've, you're doing the right thing and so you you have this point where like that shows a real difference of hitting back to zero um, mm. for Johnny and that he's able to just kind of overcome the idea of like, there's only kind of like, there's, there's an end, like the end only matters. It's only about walking. It's only about, you know, being the best. And that's kind of a direct conflict with like everyone else. Like Diego is like, his one thing is like, he has to be the best at the horse race. Like for it's, money. Hmm? He's he's really big into money, Diego. So th there's yeah, that aspect it, too. Yeah, it's for, like for everyone has reason. Hmm? for a good reason he's into money. Yeah, and like everyone has these like goals, and the idea is like, what are you willing to sacrifice for your goals? And and to Johnny, Johnny realizes getting back to zero is not isn't you know sacrifice everything for those goals, but realizing what you have to, what you can and cannot sacrifice. Because that's just that makes zero for you because you you know where you stand mm -hmm. essentially, and and he said you know, stand. Oh, ah! <laughs> and for Valentine, it's it's he's God Valentine's such a cool character in my opinion. He's one of my favorite villains. 
he he just Same. everything he does he's top three is for me. so yeah and his his stand is so goddamn cool and kind of really reflects that whole like hive mindset of just determination of being able to mm. just have the willpower to from wherever you are to do what you need and like it's it's this kind of really scary idea that someone with a strong enough desire to have something will not stop until they are like put into the ground and it's just like you know the, he's willing he he talks about all the people that die in the race as literal pawns on a test board and he's just like oh I, like they don't matter because i won the game like i won the game it doesn't matter how many pieces i lost i still won that's his whole big deal and for gyro he has the one piece that he cannot lose and so that's kind of like where they are against each other but i think valentine's more of a better foil for gyro than he is for johnny um how so because because Jar at the very start I think, no it's like it's what chapter 10 we go into gyro's like Motivation. first backstory and like we really learn why he's in this race and the race and the reason he's in there is to save a young boy and kind of like and and you're like oh okay i guess that's noble but really it, it kind of is it's also about saving him and and gyro just not giving up his moral ideals and saying like i'm not gonna kill this kid because he's a kid kind of deal there's like he's an executioner and he wants to to back it up the gyro's whole backstory is that he comes from a family of doctors but also work as executioners in secret for the king if i'm correct the royal family the, uh, it's for the uh the po the pope's um what's that place it in the, italy this uh, the vatican the vatican yeah he works for the except vatican. he's from the yeah it's no wait, he's from, he? no Hot no he's from, from naples okay. he's from naples so Pardon. the royal family there or whatever and he acts as executioner and essentially uh a a coup gets started and this kid is found with in the home of one of the the coup leaders because he happened to be working as like a as a as a shoe shiner or something and so to be safer than sorry they're like kill the boy the boy's like six years old and and so a bunch of other things happen and and basically gyro's dad tells him like your first execution is going to be this kid because you need to learn that it doesn't matter you just have to do your duty and and so gyro sets up and says like no there it does matter because you're you're telling me to sacrifice a piece of my soul and so compare that to valentine who is the president of the United States, and his duty is to protect the United States. He's just like, yeah, I'll just, I'll become a monster to protect the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm more than willing. Like, I will, I will straight up murder people. I will go across time and space to collect the things that I need. I will literally kill myself over and over again to make sure I win. And, and so, so they're diametrically opposed in in the fact of duty. That, yeah, that's, that's a good. Yeah, Man, I like. You that. know, what? I really like this because the whole time I had always, uh, I'd never considered valentine as a foil for gyro i was always always analyzing like oh how is he a foil to johnny but now that you mentioned it yeah there's a there's a pretty uh there's a pretty hard contrast here yeah and it's and that's another kind of like other theme and it it touches on sandman a bit about the difference between like duty for your people you kind of it's funny because you have the opposite effect in sandman in the very first chapter where you see sandman um he was reading books and studying the white man language and what their words not mine <laughs> yeah, it is what it um, is. yeah and 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 like you know he gets found out and his tribe the the organization he belongs to is like you are not sticking to our customs you are not one of us we're kicking you out and we're going to kill you for it kind of deal and sam is just like i'm doing whatever i can to save our village i'm going to compete in this race i'm going to buy the land back i'm going to learn everything about the United States government. So you you kind of get this glimpse of the idea of like what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve your goal, even if it means you're directly opposed to the people that you're saving or doing or whatever. So like that that it kind of like sneaks out into at the very beginning of like oh hey, the idea of like opposing ideolo ideologies and the meanings and the ends for these goals is a kind of a key conflict throughout all of this. 
because it's pretty good. I like yeah, it. it's it, yeah, it's it, it was something that I realized on my like second read through of the mm-hmm. of the part where I was like, oh, this is literally what's happening with um not literally, but it's it's a close of like an opposite of kind of what is uh going on with gyro. gyro and Valentine. Yeah. Yeah. And so you you kind of get a glimpse into that on a smaller scale before it becomes like really big. Um so so really like the big thing is like and and Johnny says this I think at the very beginning where like this is a story about how he like comes to terms with himself and coming back to zero, but it's also like him telling the story of him and Gyro and him like seeing Gyro's progression through his eyes. Yeah. And really Johnny doesn't shift into that full protagonist role until the very end of the part. Yes, because and- uh we were mentioning earlier how he sacrifices stuff for Gyro. But in his murder boner quest, it gets <laughs> even darker from that point in Bradley's favorite arc, which is Civil War. Oh my god, I love Civil War, but I don't have... I'll, that's a whole episode in and of itself. <laughs> let's uh, let's do some quick uh, just finishing thoughts. Uh, I guess I'll start, because um, we're like 35 into this 20-minute segment as we do. That's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's, honestly, Steel Ball Run deserves even more than this, but you know what? This is a good starter. Maybe we'll... We'll probably bring it up again. Like, yeah. I'll see some sort of, like, pamphlet. It's like, hey, this reminds me of something from Steel Ball Run, and I want to talk about it. Um, so, Steel Ball Run, it's 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 honestly a masterpiece. You can really see what Araki can do. Araki is the writer and author of JoJo's. What he can do on a monthly schedule, uh, which Steel oh, yeah. Ball Run... We should... <laughs> Yeah, we should mention that. Yeah. Um. So, like, just for backup sake, um. So, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure started in Shonen Jump. It was a weekly manga, which meant in '86, pub- I believe it started. Yeah, in ni- like 1986, it started, and it was published every week. So Araki had to write week to week. Um, that's really hard. Like, it try to r- write one page of some of a narrative every week. <laughs> and just do one page every week, but have a full novel by the end of it. But also it's, make it's, it interesting and, 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 and engaging and action packed. Yeah. It's a talk. And, and consistent. <laughs> so he sacrificed <laughs> that last one to make the other ones really pop. Right. Um, um, but like, there was always something in JoJo's like, oh, I see what he's doing here, especially in part four. And like, in part one, it was there, but like, part one's executed kind of like weirdly and poorly it's part age. four it's really yeah it's really aged poorly uh part four really had that kind of subtle like tones of like community and like monsters of the community and like interactions between people loneliness solitude versus community is a big yeah thing. part four is one we'll get to in the future it's it's my favorite part it's one of my favorite yeah. things ever um these guys have heard me talk about it enough but now you're gonna hear me talk about it uh, later later but the, but the part we're getting to is that there was always this hint of Araki like wanting to tell a more fleshed out story and more Something fleshed more out mature characters. too yeah yeah and so i, I want to say a quarter through not a quarter but like a, a i want to say two or three volumes into steel ball run he switches to ultra jump which is the monthly version of shonen jump yes um so it doubles the length of each chapters, but it also doubles his time to make these chapters. It quadruples his time to make these chapters. Well, yeah, I, yeah, less. yeah. And so he he really each chapter doesn't like drag, except for one, which is a real kind of weird out of nowhere <laughs> chapter. But each one has its purpose. You mean the best We're reading, chapter? <laughs> yeah, like Willer and I are reading Jojolian like right now, Ooh. and I don't know Willer's thoughts. But to me, Dejolian's so tightly written, and it comes back, and everything that's like offered up there comes back with some sort of meaning. Where Except in like for other like part... one thing, and like me and Joe have both like moved past it. Yeah, and that's Araki being Araki. But like, it, but everything is so tightly together that you can really tell. Like Araki knows like what it takes to make a good story. It's just the time crunch was not beneficial to him at all compared to Oda who can who has the story like Oda's mapped down his head and um so but, but on to f- final points here um yeah we we have to set that groundwork also me and Joe will be talking about Joe Jolion periodically because I'm fucking having a great if you're not liking Joe Jolion either don't read monthly or like read it in binges because it was really fun catching up and now me and Joe are both so invested that every chapter is just great um, yeah, we'll probably bring it up in like whatever, whatever, comes out. whatever. Yeah. Um, 
Bradley should we'll start it one day and then we'll talk about that then. Uh, so my final <laughs> thoughts <laughs> on Steel Ball Run. Um, amazing trio of characters between Johnny Gyro and Valentine. And Hot Pants. <laughs> Such a strong trio. All right, we'll, we'll get there now. I fucking hate Hot Pants. Uh, oh, God. I am a notorious Hot Pants hater because her stand is so convenient all the fucking time. And that's um, all we're going to talk about Hot Pants because that's, that's a whole other segment. You know what? Let's not get – yeah, let's not get into it. I know Araki's done it before, but this one's annoyed me the most. Um, she's all right as a person. Uh, uh, I like all the all the minor villains. Man, Ringo wrote again – Fucking uh, Mike O, Diego, all good. so such good minor villains. Um, even Pork Pie Hat Kid, he's cool. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, really good finale. I'll bring this up. Um, really fantastic finale. Finale. The standoff between Johnny and Valentine at the end with the "I want to trust you" a hundred and one percent line. Fucking oh man, masterclass. But then Iraqi adds the DLC chapter. Yeah, and I uh... I think I'm the most sour on this chapter out of everyone here. If you've read Steel Ball Run, you know exactly what the DLC chapter is and the high voltage high voltage arc. Like I liked it, but just <sighs> did, did we need it? When when someone brought up that the horses were moving and and you know the the shenanigans that were going on, I was like, oh fuck, it's even worse than I thought. <laughs> Anyways, all right, that that's it for me. Let's. Uh, uh, go. For when I when I read Steel Ball Run, I kind of like was at a lower point of like my life. Joe was, was at negative, and it got him to plus ten. Yeah, and plus ultra, plus, plus ultra. Um, but to me, the, the biggest thing about the the story that I really enjoyed and thought was is the the idea of standing back up and getting over like the failures in your life and where it's come and just kind of like learning to to keep like getting back getting yourself back up to zero and that it's not always about being the best because the, the one of the first things that like you immediately notice right off the bat is johnny does not want to win the race that's his lowest priority that the entirety of the part the only thing that matters is he figures out how to get back to zero and he thinks by riding with gyro he's going to learn that and so it's just the idea that like sometimes like your life isn't about being the best it's just making sure you can stand up for yourself and it was it was great it was wonderful i read break my heart and it nearly broke my heart Aww. um so it's great town time it's probably the best manga i've read uh of everything so far in my life one piece is getting real up there it's probably one piece is probably at number two now because one piece is real good I'll, um, I'll take that because I got all of these guys into One Piece and JoJo's. I did the, I did all of this. This podcast happened because of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I think of any of the parts that I would want to see animated or adapted, it's part seven just because, A, I think it tells a really great story, and, B, there is so much shit that I really just want to see move and be animated. and Black just have. More. Yeah. Yeah. Blackmore. A better clarification on how some things interact, like with the fucking cups. Jesus. Um. But yeah, it's just it's one of those things that I just hold dear to my heart and just I really love. CGI horses, yeah. Joe. CGI uh, horses. CGI we don't talk about horses. those. It's okay. It'll be fine. All right, it's not the CGI baseball players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sing us off. Uh, sing us off. I don't, that's not a term. Whatever um to uh i don't know steel ball run i was really happy because uh it was very hyped up for me and with a lot of hype comes the fear that something won't live up but it far surpassed the hype that i had received for it um and to make me doubly pleased uh when i had previously read stone ocean uh unpopular opinion it at the time was my favorite part of jojo's oh, by we'll a huge talk margin about that. Yeah. And uh, I was really upset because I was like, I, as much as I loved it, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't think JoJo's can get better than this. There's no way Steel Ball Run's that good, and uh, it was that good. And I, I want to add to that that Bradley is the harshest among us 
Bradley's fucking harsh about shit, all right? There's this arc in Stone Ocean that he hated, and me and Joe can't remember which one, but we were like, we were like, Bradley's done. He's not going to read anything anymore. <laughs> like, like, he's not going to make it to Still All Run. Like, literally, we just, he was, <laughs> like, he was done. Because <laughs> Bradley's really... by the time really... I finished it, it was my favorite. You see? Yeah. So he can turn around. He's really into consistency and, like, consistent power sets. He's really into that. Um, yeah, like, like when Willer was talking about uh, Hot Pants, I... I usually tremendously dislike something done for convenience sake. And that's very much what a uh, gold experience and cream starter are. Yeah. A little bit of white snake a little bit too. Yeah. Um, well now Bradley can one day start the actual best part <laughs> for ball. Run. Uh, uh, yeah. I can reread steel ball one. Hey, okay. 